Uh, yeah, can you hear me in the screen? Um, so essentially my talk today is going to be uh, a quick little flash talk to talk about the state of the DevOps survey 2017 and some of the stuff we discovered in 2016. But first, I'll introduce you guys to the pub team. So essentially, down the back of the room, you've got Matt Toscano, the account manager. You've got Dylan Ratcliffe, professional services engineer. You've got Tim Sharp, who I didn't know what to look back until about 10 minutes ago. He just showed up. He started yesterday. Um, so you have like literally the Pokemon of Puppet in the room, you've got one of everything. Um, who knows what Puppet is? Most of you do. Excellent, right? So I'll save this field. Um, essentially, actually, Tim's quite famous. He's employee, ex-employee number 13 at GitHub. So say hello to Tim. <laughs> He's quite shy about it, so feel free to remind him all the time. Um, well, he's now employee number 500 and something in public, so I guess it is a lucky number. Uh, so look, um, we all know DevOps is a, is a lot of different things, um, but I think mostly as time has gone on, it's about tools and cultural things as well. So the state of the DevOps survey is essentially about measuring and reporting these things back to the community. So hands up if you've actually filled a DevOps survey before. You have, excellent. So hopefully the intention here is today to get all of you to fill it out. Um, and then after the survey results are collated, we'll come back and we'll present to you again. Um, so the most difficult to address of these things are, are cultural issues. Um, James actually raised an important thing at the start of the, the meetup. So how many of you have actually got DevOps in your title? So interesting fact pointed out to me by Dylan, the state of the survey report says if you've got DevOps in your title, just in your title, you're probably getting about 20% more pay. So the rest of you should probably go away and do something about that. <coughs> this is one of those cultural things that we run into as well. So there's a lot of people that just get their job rebranded as DevOps, and all of a sudden, you know, the organization has DevOps engineers. So there's a couple of findings that I'll go through that I find particularly useful, um, especially when you're talking about the organizational value of DevOps. We're not, not talking about just changing your title, we're talking about things that are tangible, things that are measured in the survey and things that you can prove back to your organization. So high performing teams are actually 24 times more productive, um, essentially, essentially when you're talking about recovery, deployments and rollouts. So the interesting thing here to note, right, these aren't, sorry, what's going on? These aren't production releases, these are day-to-day -day releases. So we're talking about agility on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, essentially what you see is, because culturally DevOps help you remove things like fear of failure, you see people deploying more often, and because it's a unified skill set, everybody's pretty much doing the same thing. You don't have those key man risks. Um, we'll make the slide set available so it's, it'll be shared. Don't, don't stress about taking pictures. Um, the other great thing is you have a three-time lower failure rate. But statistically, it becomes almost insignificant. Whilst your failure rate is three times lower, but because of the fact that you're releasing like 500 times a day, your failure rate percentage becomes tiny. Um, that's a really interesting statistic to, to raise because you're not actually changing your failure rate. It's still happening, right? But because your, your dependencies and your other things in the tool chain are kind of taken care of automatically because your production releases are greater and your other releases are greater, failure becomes statistically insignificant. Um, I'll talk about this when we actually do the post-production uh, findings of 2017, but this is a great stat to look at. So the other great thing is security is no longer an afterthought um, as part of DevOps releases, because what you're doing is when you're doing your continual release cycle, security is pretty much just like every other thing you're bundling into your release. Um, so how many of you are security engineers or security people? You, you should care about DevOps because it gives you better security. We can talk about him later when he leaves. Um, another great thing is because culturally you're more inclined to recommend a place you like working at than a place you don't like working at, what we see is, yeah, as obvious as that sounds, is that people tend to be happier. Um, and for middle management and higher management, this is a great thing, right? Because basically you're retaining people, you're upskilling them, and you're not burning them out. So burnout is a huge thing in, in ops. So how many of you are walking around with pages on a regular basis? 
Yeah, so I used to do that. That's not a fun existence. Uh, pages on call, uh, DevOps helps you become more responsive and essentially it liberates you from doing that stuff day, day to day. And I'm not talking about the fluff word DevOps, I'm talking about when you implement these practices like agile, tooling, automation, orchestration. Another great statistic, if you look at the new work versus unplanned work, you'll notice there's not much of a difference between the unplanned work, right? 21 to 27%, statistically not huge. But look at the amount of new work that you're actually absorbing. Um, the other work, kind of the same, I'd say 5%, kind of the same. But the ability to, new, to do new work pretty much comes from the fact that you know what your release cycle looks like. You're basically iterating very, very frequently. And because you know what failure looks like and you know how to roll back really quickly, that's kind of the core of the, the DevOps tool chain. Um, you're doing a lot more things, a lot more productively all the time. So I'm not gonna read every single one of these boxes because people will probably lose their minds. Essentially, um, all you need to know is lean, um, lean product development, which means you're doing it with minimal waste, you know, minimal handing over between teams and that sort of stuff. Um, it's better, uh, it's a better predictor of IT performance so you can go into an organization and not necessarily look at their statistics, right? But ask them whether or not they have lean practices. If you have a lean practice, chances are you're basically better off, right? So without having done the, the statistical analysis of your organization, if you're practicing lean methodologies, you're better off than most other places. So the other thing is, Again, I'll raise security because quality and security kind of go hand in hand. Um, how many of you have had to patch things ad hoc in the last year and just down tools? So all your hands should be up because I know like there've been some pretty major security issues in the last year. Um, so automated patching is, is another one. So how many of you got automated patching? So I come like, yeah, everybody else's hand should have come up before. Um, Automated patching is really, really important because it stops you from having to drop everything that you're doing to remediate something that has just come out of nowhere. So you guys remember Poodle and OpenSSL? So one of the really good use cases that I saw was um, an orchestration tool basically within an old organization that I used to work for, and one of my colleagues is here, we were patched literally within minutes of the packages being uh, released. And that's what, a fleet of 800, 900 machines? Not, not a small task for a team of seven. But yeah, essentially that time lost because we have what you'd say DevOps or at least you know, SecOps. And that's another word you'll hear later this year, like DevSecOps. Um, essentially, it stops you wasting time reacting to things. So <clears throat> essentially this year, the DevOps survey is at that URL, and I'd encourage you to all fill it out. It'll take 20 minutes. Um, it's really important that you fill it out because we like to have a lot more participation from APAC. I think last year we had, what, maybe 20% 20, 20 of the top organizations respond in Asia. Uh, maybe more, I don't remember the stat, to people shaking their heads at me <laughs> at the back of the room. Um, so fill it out, because then when we present the results to you, it'll be more relevant. Um, and we can kind of engage on, on what the statistics show. But you saw a little bit of what happened last year, and what I'll do is I'll actually bring back the statistics from last year and compare it to this year. And given that a lot of you, this is like your first meetup, I think you should fill it out just to kind of get a gauge of you know what things uh, people are looking for and what we're actually measuring. Sorry, I should have been sure that might be for. <clears throat> so there's a couple of reasons to take the survey, right? The, the first most important thing is it, you're actually contributing back to the community. You're, you're gonna give something back. But if that doesn't, you know, plug your boat, we give away a couple of gift cards, and there's two tickets uh, to the UK, um, and I think there's one for the States. Yeah, there is one for the States, San Fran. So if you want a lucky people, uh, we'll ship you there. All right, so if you've got any questions, feel free to ask. Um, otherwise, we're here, we'll be here more often. Um, and I'll come back and present on the state of the DevOps 2017. The intention today is for you to go and fill us out.
right, no questions? Thanks.